The topic of this video will be how to effectively treat carpal tunnel syndrome by only addressing the neck and shoulder. I cover the following. One, the definition of carpal tunnel syndrome. Two, history data points of carpal tunnel syndrome. Three, how to decide where to begin successful treatment. And lastly, treatment explanation and demonstrations of manual-based treatments of a common cause of carpal tunnel syndrome coming directly from the shoulder and the neck. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on finding and fixing scar tissue and then reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning, flexibility, and long-lasting pain relief. I am also the creator of the PEAK Method and the founder of the Soft Tissue Treatment Revolution, where we teach overworked massage therapists a better treatment system that will allow you to cut your treatment times by at least 50% so you can stay healthy, avoid that dreaded burnout, and help a hell of a lot more people get out of pain. All right, how to effectively treat carpal tunnel syndrome with only treating the neck and the shoulder like to put these educational videos out to help you think differently, treat differently, but most importantly, help people get better quality care treatment so they can stay the hell away from pain pills, injections, and surgeries, which only make things worse. Let's get right into the educational video. So let's just start with a definition of carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a common condition that causes numbness, tingling, and pain in the hand and the forearm. The condition occurs when one of the major nerves to the hand, specifically the median nerve, is squeezed or compressed as it travels through the wrist. In most patients, carpal tunnel syndrome gets worse over time. So that's the working definition we have from the traditional medical model. So carpal tunnel history question. So one thing that I teach in my system, the PEAK method, is getting to a tissue-specific problem list and asking questions, doing a thorough and detailed history and a thorough and detailed evaluation. Because I always say, if you don't know what the problem is in the first place, you sure as hell can't fix it. So there's a bunch of questions that we ask during the initial consultation or taking of the history. Usually there's about 12 of them, but there's a couple in carpal tunnel that really stand out. Number one is going to be, where do they feel the pain? You know, a lot of times in carpal tunnel situations, the pain is going to come down through here, middle finger, a little bit into the fourth, a little bit in through here and in there as well. They could get some stuff a little bit higher up in the medial part of the four arm as well. I'm always trying to ask the client to really point to where they feel it. They just go, oh, my hand is numb or tingling. I'm like, where in your hand is your is it numb and tingling? Is it the entire hand? Is it a certain place? You know, Because a lot of times people automatically think if they have any pain in the wrist, in the hand, or even like down and through the forearm, that it must be carpal tunnel syndrome, but it doesn't really tell us anything. A lot of times when I have a definition or a diagnosis of syndrome, it's usually just code word for they really don't have an idea of what's going on. And they're just trying to throw something in there to appease the insurance company and start some nonsense treatment that isn't going to actually fix the problem. Next is like, what is the pain going to feel like? So a lot of times when there's what's called a nerve entrapment, the nerve gets squeezed. And usually what happens is it gets squeezed with a bunch of bad tissue around the muscles. Over time, scar tissue develops. It builds up in the muscles, gets stuck to the nerve. When it gets stuck, it creates symptoms of numbness aching, burning, and tension. Those are clinical and like really hallmark signs of some type of nerve entrapment going on in the arm somewhere. I want to see that. Next thing is like, what makes it worse? A lot of times when there's a nerve entrapment, when they're not using it and they're just kind of chilling out, it doesn't feel too bad. But as soon as they start moving it around, maybe they reach for something, they work on the computer, they type, they do something. I want to see something makes it worse. Then I also want to know, is there anything to make it feel a little bit better? Maybe if they rest it, maybe if they ice it, maybe if they throw a brace on it, maybe if they take an ibuprofen, I don't know, or a stretch. I want to see that something is making it a little bit better. It's not fixing it, but it's making it a little bit better because I'm really trying to decide, is this a soft tissue related component that I can treat and the nerve entrapment itself? Next question I want to know is, is there any history of trauma to the elbow? 
or the wrist. That really gives me an idea of like where I want to start in the process. Was there a trauma to the elbow? Did they have a fall? Did they break their wrist? Did they have an elbow injury? I need to know these questions. Next thing I want to know is there's any history of trauma to the shoulder or the neck. You know, a lot of times people might have some weightlifting injuries. They might've had some injuries in the shoulder playing a sport. Um, a lot of people have neck pain, neck dysfunction, car accidents, all sorts of things stuck on a computer all day. Next question I want to know is what do they do for recreation or activity? That could also be when they were younger. Did they play like a violent sport like football? Did they play baseball? Did they play volleyball? Did they do something where they're really using their elbow, really using their wrist, really using their shoulder, really using their neck? Are they doing some type of workout or recreation where they're going to really tax that area and put a lot of pressure on that area as well? It helps me kind of differentiate about what's going on. And lastly, I want to know what they do for work. That makes a big difference for me. You know, maybe if they're like a manual laborer and they're they're gripping and using their hands all day, or maybe there's someone that just sits at a desk all day and they're moving their fingers around all day long, or they're just doing some type of manual labor or repetitive type of thing. It really gives me an idea. So the key that you want to understand is I want you to think as a clinician first and like asking questions. Don't just be like, if someone comes in, it's like, oh, it hurts down here. You just start there. You always want to be able to answer the question of why that problem is in there in the first place and you want to be able to figure it out and put a whole process together and a whole treatment idea instead of just jumping right in. You know, so many providers are stuck just kind of going where it hurts and sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't, but I want you to have reproducible and consistent results every single time. And that starts with a very thorough and in-depth history. So most important factor to decide where to start, am I going to start in the wrist or am I going to start in the elbow? One's going to be that trauma or not. So if I have someone that presents with what I think is carpal tunnel syndrome and issues like that, but they have no history of elbow or wrist trauma, I'm more than likely thinking it's coming from higher up and usually it's going to be in the shoulder or the neck. I also, if I have a client, as I start asking them, I'm like, hey, have you ever had any shoulder issues over the years? Do you have neck pain, neck tightness, neck soreness? I'm starting to think more and more that that nerve is getting compromised higher up in the chain. I also want to know when I'm looking at that, like their past and current sports activities, are they doing a lot of things where they're just trashing that area, trashing that nerve? And then, as I said before, the current load factors in their job, what they're doing, it gives me a better idea of what's going on. Because basically what happens is when the median nerve, as I said in the definition of the carpal tunnel syndrome, when it does get compromised or stuck or impinged, as they say, nerves are built with about 15% of extra slack. And a lot of times it gets all used up higher up in the neck and down through the shoulder and the brachial plexus. And then a lot of the symptoms are further down. I always say a lot of this is the effect but it's not the true cause. So, so much treatment out there really goes after the effect, but doesn't get to the cause. And that's just going to continue to come back. You know, people get carpal tunnel release surgeries, they wear braces, they get injections, but it keeps coming back because what's going on a lot of times is was the problem is higher up. So once I've decided that it isn't coming from the wrist or the forearm, I want to start up top. So the median nerve is actually a very big nerve and it it's composed of several of the nerve root levels in there going all the way from C6 all the way down to T1. And it can get compromised in any of those areas. And a lot of areas where I see this problem start is in between the muscles called the scalene. So there's three muscles in the front of your neck, your anterior, your middle, and your posterior scalene. And then those nerve roots, they have to pierce out to get where they need to go. And a lot of times with bad posture, history of accidents and trauma, sitting all day, overworking their neck, stress, all that stuff, that scar tissue builds up in those scalenes. And then eventually what can happen is it gets entrapped in the nerves. So it can either get caught going between, so you have the middle scalenes going right down and then the anterior in the front and then the posterior in the back, where I tend to find a lot of entrapments can either be, I'd say like, 20 to 30% of the time on the anterior to the middle scalene, but most of what I find is on the posterior to the middle scalene. That's where most of that tension and that entrapment occurs. So that's where I'm kind of biasing my treatment as I go in there and break that down. Now to success, successfully treat this, you want to get proper depth and tension and then have the client's neck go through a full range of motion that breaks down that 
entrapment frees it up and allows that nerve to free up a little bit and a lot of times takes the pressure off of there. So what I want to include first is just a, a brief demonstration of me directly treating a nerve root entrapment in the scalene. So I'll link that up right now. Sink in, I'm going to back off and then I'm going to set some tension with a body lean. And then I'm going to take this other hand where the base of the occiput is and I'm going to pull it and force that to come through just like that. I'm not moving a lot. It's coming right to me. Now I'm going to get some of my depth and tension by pushing in and then I'm going to set my tension just like that and that loads that up. Now all my motion is going to come from this opposite hand. I'm going to go here and I'm going to slowly pull that occiput over just like that. So we're here, I'm going to fulcrum in, we're going to sink in just like that, we're going to back off set some tension and then I'm going to pull with this opposite hand and force that scar tissue and that nerve to roll over here. So just a couple takeaways from watching that video. It's just a demonstration. We go way more in depth in our full training programs, but you can see I'm very slow. I'm very precise. I'm very deliberate. You know, a lot of providers out there, they just kind of jam the hell out of it. It hurts like hell. It doesn't really do anything to effectively treat the nerve and trap me. You need the right amount of depth, the right amount of tension and feel that slide underneath your thumb to break that down. It doesn't need a ton of work. It just needs the right work in the right direction and in the right vectors, which I demonstrated in that video. Now, the next area that I do assess and treat is going to be on the front part of the subscap, specifically at the brachial cords. Um, there's a lot that goes on in there. The neurovascular bundle, a lot of issues can go. And the, the median nerve tends to set like right in the middle there, you know, on the one side up top is more of the radial nerve and then the ulnar nerve is down towards the bottom. So basically when I'm going in there and I'm feeling and I'm breaking that down, I'm feeling where that nerve entrapment is occurring. And what I'll do is like, say this is the median nerve right in the middle, I'll go one side more kind of inferior and I'll feel, is it tensioning there? And then when it's on the other side, if it's more superior, is it tensioning there? That's gonna really help me understand my vectors as I'm bringing it back in the treatment and breaking that down. It tends to be a really big problem, especially people with a history of shoulder issues. A lot of times those brachial cords are just jammed up and really stuck to that scar tissue in there. Now, a lot of people, when they're trying to treat this area, they're way too compressive. And a lot of times they're not even on the brachial cords or the subscap themselves. They don't go far enough in to access that area. And a lot of times they're more just treating the lat or the teres major on the side. It hurts like hell for the client, but it's not actually doing anything. It's not effectively breaking that down. So what I want to include as well in this video is a demonstration of me treating the subscap in that area so you can get an idea of how slow and deliberate and focused I am. So I'll link that video up right now. We go in, that allows me to sink in on that subscap. Then I back out. I've already done the palpation. I've already found all that. And then I'm going to put that muscle in that shortened position. And my depth is going to be just a very slight drop in with my body weight, maybe about four or five ounces of pressure. And then my tension is going to be a lean straight across. And that's loaded up in a little more shortened position. And what you're gonna do is slowly start to drop that in just like that. You're gonna go very slow, very precise. When you feel it start to pull, now you're gonna shift your body around and you want attraction with that. And you're not in a rush. You're getting that to open up, you're leaning in with more of that tension. So a couple of take homes from that treatment video, slow, deliberate, precise, and focus. You know, it's a very sensitive area, but it is such a key component to having issues down the arm, pain in there. And if you can effectively treat it and you just slow down and feel the tissue, it's going to make you so much better. It's going to be such a better effective treatment. It's not going to hurt like hell for the client. And it's going to make amazing, amazing results. So that's all I got for you in this video. I appreciate you watching and you can do me a solid and help spread this material. You know, number one is to share any insights you might've gotten in the comment section below. Number two is share this with other providers that you know 
it might help, you know, that want to do good work, want to figure out problems. And lastly, go in and download our free training modules. The links for that are wherever you're consuming this, and it can really help you get on that path to thinking more critically, solving problems, treating better, treating faster, treating more effectively, and being a clinician first and a technician second.